couple of really important things before we do anything. When we play at clubs with like fence and swords and spaders and rapiers and all that, those are like training forms that are made safer, right? This doesn't have a steel pipe or a steel tip on it, but it is in every other way a weapon, right? So we can't use these lightly, meaning like don't be smacking other people with them because, you know, it, in the end it's like three or four pounds just wood and it'll hurt, it'll break bones pretty easy, especially with thrusts that can be pretty dangerous. So um, be aware of that. We're probably not going to do too much other than trying to kind of press each other's pipes point to the ground. That's mostly what we're going to do in any sort of like competitive or sparring way. Uh, and the rest of it is mostly just body mechanics. Right? So obviously uh, this would have had, all of them would have had a steel tip at the end, like a spear point. Some of them were longer, some of them were shorter. And most of them would have had a couple of feet of what was called lingette. The lingette is basically there's a spike head, and then there's steel strips that come down that are bolted through. Uh, so the idea was, when it breaks, it breaks in a predictable place, and then you can just take that part off and put it on a new shaft. Uh, pikes broke all the time. They were expected to be kind of uh, like you, right? Disposable. Okay. So that's the idea. Uh, pikes range in size from usually around, like probably the shortest they call it, anything a pike about eight feet. Uh, most of you have 10 foot pipes and they range all the way up to like 20 feet. It just depends. One of the most popular things to do with pipes was uh, if you turned away from, from your like people that carried them for more than five minutes, they would cut them down to be shorter so they could carry them more easily. Uh, so that's like the, the attitude we should cultivate, right? It's not we're trying to learn how to super hyper kill everybody. It's mostly like being somebody who was on campaign in the 16th century probably sucked because you were probably really hungry and you were probably doing everything you possibly could to get out of doing as much work as possible. Right? That's kind of the idea. Of it. So when Meyer talks about the pipe, he's talking about it in terms of like its potential as a weapon for fencing, which is not the same as its potential as the weapon on the battlefield. Right? This is for everything that you do fencing for. Right? It's for showing off, it's for display, it's for proving to other people that you know what you're talking about. That's the kind of thing. So what we're going to focus on today is some of the, I don't know, the mechanical basics that we can kind of add athleticism to so that we can look super cool. So I just did a class at an event uh, a couple weeks ago in Wisconsin, and part of the purpose of that class was to talk about how in an era before uh, resume, an era before paperwork, like how do you prove that you know what you're talking about? And a lot of it is just physicality, right? So I read a lot of uh, like naval fiction. Have you ever heard of like Master and Commander, things like that, right? The thing they talk about all the time, sailors are climbing up a mast. They climb up the rigging, and then they get to a platform uh, at the, the mast as they call it. And the platform is that's where the Marines stand and shoot stuff. And in order to get on that, there's a little hole that you can climb through straight up like a ladder. They call that the lubber hole. And if you're on a boat and you're a lubber, that means you're an idiot. You don't know what you're doing or talking about. So you don't go through the lover's hole, right? You climb up and then you climb backward across what they call the buttock shroud, and then you fling yourself over the top of that. And there's no reason for this. It's just because you, you do it because you can, right? You do it because, like, you're a sailor and you're experienced, and this is how you show up. So, like, this is sort of the spirit we should inhabit, right? Is we're trying to show off as much as we can, not necessarily learn how to kill somebody with a pike. Because how you kill somebody with a pike is you just poke them with it. That's it. It's not that hard. You get your pike on top of theirs, you force their pike down, and then you do this. Right? Or you take a step forward. That's it. You know how to kill people with a pike. Right? The rest is just the fun part. It's like slinging it around and doing one-handed thrusts and stuff like that. So that's the idea. Um, Meyer, this is a pretty short part of the book. Uh, I think the pike might actually be the shortest weapon in terms of just like number of things that he has in there, but as you'll find out in a minute, it's, you know, the difficulty of the pike isn't necessarily like learning technique, but it's a really heavy thing that's kind of awkward and it takes a little while to use. So, first things first, holding it. Do you want us to put gloves on? Uh, if you want, you don't need to, because we're probably not even going to be close enough to like hit each other's hands, but if you feel more comfortable, especially on your leading hand, you might want to put it on. So, in terms of leading and trailing hand, uh, your dominant hand is at the back. 
So if you are right-handed, your dominant hand should be on the back end of the pipe, and your front hand, so if you're all right-handed, your left hand should be forward, your right hand. Right? So this is more or less the basic kind of, we call it a field guard sometimes, and then there's also the relaxed field guard. Um, but this is the pike, more or less at chest level for your hypothetical opponent or somebody just across from you. Um, and yeah, there's also all sorts of other stuff that we'll get into. But uh, I was going to try to touch this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is the basic thing. So a couple things. One, uh, a wider kind of grip of the pike makes it slightly easier to carry. Um, most of yours, I think you are all holding it the right way. Um, all of your guys are tapered, so the, the back end should be thicker than the forward end. So just make sure that's right. Um, and the wider you hold your arm, the easier it is to carry, right? It's kind of like choking up on a baseball bat. Is it like a big horseshoe? Yeah. One of the ways you thrust is like this. Yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's more or less two ways to thrust, like if you're in a position like this, and one of them is like a pool cue, you slide it forward through your forward hand, and the other is just taking a step forward. Right? And that's the same with, uh, everything that we're going to do is the same with his sensing. It's just different because of the body mechanics you have to use in order to use a pipe. So there's two ways to thrust with a sword, too. And one of them is extending your arm, and the other one is taking a step forward. That's how you thrust, right? That's it. So with a pipe, it's made more or less the same thing. Most of what you're doing, again, is holding it here and just sort of walking around. Um, notice I'm not holding it here. It's at what Meyer calls the flank, which is usually, I think, just about the bottom of your rib, rib cage, where your floating ribs are. That's usually where I think the, the plank is. And this is the same with all of his pole arms. Your kind of uh, long point is made this way. Right? So you, we don't want to be super up here, but we don't want to be down here. This is a, actually a different posture, and normally you'd be more forward like this. Right? So the two more important things, there's this middle field guard. He calls this the middle guard or the field guard or the long point or whatever. Um, and then there's the high guard and the low guard. High guard is this. It's just like off with a long sword, right? If you had a long sword, your hands would be here. So there's this here. Um, and then there's the low guard, which is more like this. Right? The first thing that he has you do is learn how to thrust from below and from above. And that just means if you're here, right, you thrust. You end up in this middle guard, and then you're going to recover it from high to low. So if you thrust from here, you thrust with a step forward, and then you recover it into the lower posture. And then you do the opposite, right? You thrust with this, and then you kind of recover forward with it up. So that's easy enough to do. The, sort of the first half, of it, that's it, right? It's just making those thrusts and kind of recovering it with steps. The way he actually describes it is, in order to do this one properly, is you fling this all the way forward, as far as your arms can go, and before the tip of the, po of the pike hits the ground, you have taken a step forward with the thrust. Before that hits the ground, you step forward again and recover it. So the idea is not necessarily to do it piecemeal, one at a time. The idea is to get into doing it like this, right? Really quickly, like sending these quick little kind of, you know, bouncy, I don't know, athletic sort of thing. So, the very first thing is, let's practice from high to low. So, high guard up here. There's also this, which we're going to use quite a lot a bit later. And so getting from here to here is also worth practicing because it can be hard, right? So why is this useful as a posture? You're in marching formation. Huh? You don't want to run into people? Maybe. It gets your pike out of the way, right? What if I'm back here? Behind Han. Yeah, so I can get my pike around Han, and I can still do stuff, even though Han's in front of me. And then Han, meanwhile, can be in a more stable posture card, whatever you want to call it. So, First thing, get into your, this one. So this is technically a cut, right? If you come down from here, even though we're not actually gonna cut anything with a blade, that is the action of a cut. I already described that as a cut. 
So when you start here, it's all on your left side. So you want to get, kind of get your right hand to below your rib cage on the other side. So you go straight up, and you just sort of lower it into the floor. And then like pick somebody across from you and point at them. Just have them. All right, and then from there, raise your arm. That's it. You could, some of you might actually be able to find like the balance point of your pipe, which would be even easier. You can do that, you can hold it with one hand. But on most of these, probably too far forward. Um, but again, this is the way people fault with pipes because again, Holding it down here is pretty difficult. Holding it here is much easier. And a lot of times you do the thing that's much easier rather than the thing that like is technically maybe slightly deadlier or whatever, right? Um, getting shortcuts and cheating with it is half the fun of playing with a pipe, I think. <laughs> okay, so we start here in the high guard. We're gonna be far enough away from people across from us that we don't fling the pipe through them. Try not to let go of the pipe, at least with one hand at a time. And what I want you to do is, like a pool cue, slide a thrust forward with a step with your right foot, like this, and then just let it drop to the ground. That's why we need a lot of space. All right, so start here, and then try to get it, yeah, athletic, right? Try to really put your hip into it. See how far you can get the pipe point to go with just like a, a little, a big step like that. Everybody do five more. Yeah. Okay. Set the bike down after you've done your five. So, how many of you have done like, on how often do you have them do like body mechanics stuff? Like cut. Cutting? Yeah. Uh, we've just started getting into using my cut as a warm up. Okay. All right, so, especially for newer people, um, what you want to work on is trying to get your hip to drive all, all the motion of your body. And this is true with any weapon. So if you're doing rapier, or attack, or dagger, or anything, everything is about your hip. Everything is about your hip, right? So when we're swinging a pipe really aggressively, right? I'm not just sliding my arm forward. I'm pivoting my hip. So the very first thing I do is drive my hip as far forward as it can go, right? And that's actually what is providing the power for my thrust, is the turn of my hip and the turn of my upper body, right? And the more you turn your hip, the more you put that snap into your hip, the farther the point's going to go, and the longer time you'll have to recover the pipe before it hits the ground, right? Because that's what we're going to work up to eventually. Um, so, as a way to sort of think about it and cheat, if you have a, like a fencing mask sometimes, you kind of put that in like you're in sort of Zornhaus or Zornhut, and then turn your hip and fling it. So if you think of it like a shot play. So rather than thrusting, what you're trying to do is shot put the back end of your pike as far forward as it'll go, while maintaining control of it. And it's hard, right? It takes practice. It takes a lot of practice. But the hip is the most important thing, right? So everything that you're doing is going to be basically turning. If your back foot is kind of like, right? My front foot's going straight forward. My back foot's pointing off in some angle. It doesn't exactly matter what angle, but you want to turn the hip. And if you're thrusting with a step, the hip comes first, and then you step straight forward. Right? So footwork with Meyer is literally just stepping. I know that it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot of angst in sort of old HEMA about footwork. And most people think footwork means this, modern fencing stuff. And footwork is just walking. It's just maintaining control of what you're doing. 
by maintaining stability in your body, right? So you don't need to use a, learn a lot of special terms or anything, but this is called in Italian, at least in some Italian text, a volta stabile, which means a stable turn, right? That's all it is. So playing literally any sport, you'll see people using their hips more than anything else. You see people play basketball, you see people throw a baseball, you see people throw a football. Everything is based on your hips because your hips are the most powerful part of your body. And so when you look at old German texts and they say fence with the strength of your whole body, what they mean is ground everything in your hips, not fling everything with your arms, right? Because if I'm driving my action from my hips, that's going to be a lot more powerful than just doing something with my wrist, right? It, it happens. With a pipe, unlike with a lot of other weapons, you can't cheat, right? With a long sword, I can cheat a lot. I can use both arms. I can do almost everything with just my, my arms and hands. With a pike, it's heavy enough and awkward enough. Everything has to be rooted into my hip. And the more that I do that, the better I'll be with literally every other weapon that you do, right? Uh, so when we do that, it's all hip turn. It's a little easier to do from the lower posture. So if we start again from the lower posture. So again, middle or heel guard, kind of up by your ribs. The high guard up here, low guard here. Sometimes Mario does low guard like this. You don't have to but you can rest your forward arm on your knee. You can even kind of rest like your other knee on the ground if you want that way, right? This is a, a way to use it. Sometimes they would kind of plant the back end on the ground and they put their foot on it. And you'd only do that if like you're really convinced that the people charging you are gonna stop before they run into your pike because otherwise your foot is gone. <laughs> <That way. laughs> um, anyway, so we wanna do the same thing here, right? So we start, with the pike kind of low on our hips, and we're gonna drive our hip forward, fling our right arm forward like a pool cue, and fling the pike forward. So do that a couple times, right? You don't have to step yet, but when you're comfortable enough to add a step forward. All right, and then everybody do at least five of those and then take a water break. Okay, so now we want to put those both together and more or less like make ourselves a little warm-up drill, a little body mechanics drill to do. Starting from the top, you do your thrust with a step forward. Before the pike point hits the ground, you step forward and recover it into the low posture. And then from the low posture, you thrust up and recover high. Right? So you just saw me do it very lazily. And I was actually struggling with this until like today. But it's forward step recover before the screen right so we want to try to put a lot of oomph, right a lot of display a lot of character into that plane so again get the hips going get that forward and then come forward and recover low and then swing that high and back up. so footwork wise what I'm doing is right here my hip comes forward, I fling this, I step, and then I step forward. So it's like a little, like one of these, right? Just a quick sort of gather step and then recovery, rather than like big, huge passing step, lunge sort of a thing, and then another recovery. It's just a little like, like that, right? Um, but a lot of it is gonna come down to sort of where you place the point on your thrust, the higher you go up, the longer you're going to have before it hits the ground, obviously, right? Um, and then if anybody wants to try with a longer one, because these are actually harder to use than those ones because they're longer and the weight is distributed differently. But if you want to try with a longer one, you can. But for now, the idea is, right, go from high, thrust, recover low. From low, recover high. Go for it.
to do two more, and then we'll do something else. That should be one thrust from high, one thrust from low. So what are you noticing about the pike? I don't want to raise my arms. Yeah, it's, it's heavy. It's really hard, right? So obviously, rest up. And again, if, if you have, when you go home, if you have a massage gun or, or something, you should use that on your arms and shoulders. Uh, if not, if you have a foam roller, foam rollers are really good for recovery stuff. Um, and then stretching, especially the arms and shoulders. Anyway, so you should, you probably have noticed by now that this is a sort of unwieldy weapon. And if you start losing balance of it and trying to recover control of it, it's going to stress out everything that you're trying to put into that. So again, the more you can root everything into just your hips, the easier it's going to be to control. And it takes a lot of practice. And, you know, we just don't have a ton of time to do it. So the more you want to do pipe stuff, the better. Um, but, like I've said before, all of this stuff is relevant for longsword and just axe and dagger and everything else. Because the more you learn how to root all of your movements into your hips, the more control you're going to have when you're actually fencing with whatever. Um, so, do we want to try to do some other bullshit flourishy stuff, or do you want to play around a little bit with, like, fencing with a pike? Fencing. Okay, fencing. So, come here real quick. So, we're going to play a game. I'm not going to teach you literally anything, anything else other than what we've ta talked about already. And then I'm going to remind you about uberlauf. Who knows what uberlauf means? Not hot. Be on top. Yeah, it means to be on top, right? Uberlaufen in German literally means running over or overrunning. And the idea is basically I have an advantage just having my point, my weapon, above my opponent, right? And the reason for that is if you try to thrust, I just let my pike drop, right? That's an advantage. I can, I can defend myself pretty easily if my weapon is higher than my opponent. And this is true in swords and all of the swords that Mario teaches and literally everything else. It's the first rule of his dagger is get your hand above your opponents and force it down, right? It's a really consistent rule in all German fencing texts, and it's really important. So the game we're going to play is basically pin your opponent's point to the ground. That's it. You want to just put their point, point. We're kind of thinking about like wrestling with the point of the pipe, right? So Jacob, right? Mm -hmm. So Jacob and I are just going to mess around, and I want to drive his point down. He wants to drive my point down. If my point hits the ground above his, cool, that's, I win. If my point hits the ground below his, obviously I've lost, right? And that's it. We don't have to get any closer than where we are. We're like 14 feet away, right? We're not going to be close enough to hurt each other or hit each other. We just want to try to get our opponent's point onto the ground, right? So a couple of tips. If you are trying to get on top of your opponent's pipe, and you notice that you're just not, you're going to keep across it, it's probably because you haven't stepped across. So if you use your foot like this, you can get your, you know, you make your line go across your opponent's pike. It's going to be easier to force it down from that point. And my theory for how, like, this is about as tight as the formation would be. Because you both keep room to be able to step to either side as you're doing stuff. Because the, pipe, the weapon will not work if you're this close to each other. This is actually a lot less effective than this. And this also allows people behind us to put their pikes in and everything too. So we can play around a little bit with how we structure this. But for now, the idea is, right, I just want to get that pike on the ground. Yeah. Okay, that's it. So make two lines and we'll do it. This is going to be really tough so take as many breaks as you need to, especially if you're already tired.
good. I'm just trying to like reset. My footwork is not very good. Okay, Adam's going to supervise and then just oh, keep no. teaching him a little bit. Yeah. Take him out. Take him out. Give me a second, bro. Yeah. All right. I think I finally figured that out. The way it's probably most useful, right? Yeah. Right? So here, in the middle of the arc. Good, good. Right? It's sort of threatening me. And I need to get it across. So the, the easiest way for me to force this bike down from here would be to step here and force this bike down. So think about your feet in terms of how they turn your hip. Right? So if you imagine your navel <laughs> shoots out a Laser like the Death Star, right? And where you yeah, point your hip and yeah. shoulders is where that Death Star lies. So if I want to turn that way, I step this way, right? Because that pivots my hip towards it. And if you're going this way and I want to get out, I step around this way, right? And I keep ready to this yeah. is going back and forth. So just, just that step across the back foot. You can also do the same thing with your feet. So if I want to do the same thing, right? I want to push down. Literally, the way you describe footwork is that there are three types of steps. There's steps that go forward and backwards, there's steps that go to the sides, and there's steps that are towards the center. That's it. That's all you ever have to think about. It's mostly, again, about keeping your hips relevant. Okay, so how many of you, when you were playing around, got into a position at some point where the pike, you, you sort of like knocked off the front, um, your front hand was knocked off the pike, or vice versa, whatever. Did any of you end up in that situation ever at all? Yes. Okay. So, especially if you're putting a lot of like energy into that first thrust, you might end up a lot of the time with just one arm on the pike, and sort of like this, right? So, on the one hand, that sucks, right? Because the game we were just playing was literally like, do this to your opponent, right? That's essentially what the thing is. And if I could, while we're dicking around, if I could knock the pike out of my opponent's forward hand, that's great, right? Because it means I basically have a free shot. I have, in terms of fencing time, I have all the time in the world to set up exactly where I want to thrust him so that he leaves my presence, right? <laughs> and the more people I can get to leave my presence in front of me if I have a pike, the safer it is for me. So when you're thinking about, oh, I'm fighting in a pike line, I'm fighting in a formation or whatever, the thing you should be concerned about is not whether or not you're killing somebody, it's whether or not you are in control of the pikes that are coming in, right? So if, for instance, I'm trying to threaten Jacob, Jacob knocks my pike down and knocks, the, knocks it out of my hand and then tries to thrust at me, what can I do? Oh, I'd say a stick like yeah. That's exactly it. That's literally exactly it. So as the thrust comes in, right, I can parry it by just doing this. And if it comes in on the other side, I can parry it by doing this, right? So the first thing we want to do is you're going to put your pike out, and you're going to hold it with your hand, right, the, your, your small finger forward toward the point, right? So your thumb kind of back this way. And all we want to do is, with a big turn of our hip, go up over our head to the other side. And so your, your feet should go from basically pointing one way to pointing exactly the opposite way, right? So the, my pike is on my left, my feet are pointing that way. As I go up and around, they're going to turn around and more or less point the other way. I'm going to make a big hip turn, right? And from here, again, I go back up this way. So that's the basic action that you're doing, right? You start from here, 
you hip pivot, you go to the other side. So now, remember the first part that we did when we thrust? We're not just doing this, we're snapping our hips forward and really shooting the point as fast as we can, right? Try to do the same thing when you're making that carry. So when you come up, do this, right? If you can get the point of your pike up off the ground, even better. But what you're trying to do is just snap your hips. And the faster you snap your hips, the more movement you'll see in the point of your pike. So then, if you could sort of clear off for a bit, I don't want to hit you. So what we're trying to work up to is we go from here, right? Our pike's on the ground, it's been knocked you over, somebody's thrusting at us, I want to parry, bam. But what I want to do is parry and then give myself an opportunity to attack as soon as I can. So the point is you snap your hips around to get the point up, and then when the point gets up, you thrust. You try not to fling it like I just did. But the point is, yeah, you're doing this, getting the point up, and pressing with it in the point pocket. So you can do it from pike on your right. You go over and thrust with the backhand. You come up from your, your left and thrust with the forehand. Does that make sense? Oh, that's sick. Yeah. So that's entirely the, the purpose, right? Theoretically, we can come up with, with ways this would be useful. But for the most part, it's useful because it's fucking cool. And because being able to do it, especially in front of a crowd, is impressive. And people are like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that. And it's, it's awesome. It's super sick, right? Like, you can... You should theoretically be able to get this high enough to theoretically knock a horseman off the top of their head. But you can also use it to just kind of get from here back into uh, your guard really quickly. Bring this up, turn your hips. Bring this up, and that should bring the pipe point up high. So you can it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you kind of want to work on that to point come up higher, higher. But it's all about snapping the hip and getting us to move. Thank you. Good.
thing that I think is just kind of neat. Yeah. So, Meyer talks about timing your thrust with a pipe more than he talks about anything else. And the reason for that is, you, most of you have probably noticed, right? What happens when you're moving this thing around? It wiggles, it bounces. If you watch like steel, like tournament fencing or whatever with even steel faders, you'll see that they move this much also, but they're a lot shorter and it happens a lot faster. So you can see it a lot, mostly because like camera shutter speeds are fast enough to kind of pick up on it. Do I want you to time it with the wiggle? Yes. So he talks about all the time, if you're swinging your pike up to make an attack, you actually wait until it's sort of settled before you send the pike or the point forward. Because if I send it forward as it's coming up, when I start thrusting, it's going to complete that action, and the point's going to go up here and be super useful. So if I bring it up and I wait for it to settle back down and then thrust, the point will actually hit rather than it's skating over the top, right? Think about it like FA, where you're trying to tag like over the top of somebody's wrist. What does Meyer call it if he doesn't use the word wiggle? I think what? Okay, that sounds more grown up. Yeah. But it's the same thing. I mean, he says flex in German, so we could we could translate it to wiggle. Um, but that's a unique property of the pike that's not not part of any other weapon that he takes. And it's just because of the, just the property of having a piece of wood that's just, you know, takes to be Can I show you something about that, right? Sure. Probably 14 or 16 feet. You want it to be long enough that it's Makes sense, but short enough that you can let them go come down. I think that's the, the pike section in the book is quite short. 
ways around the more you can do with it. But you can also use like you know strong elite. We can use Google Option to talk about like how you can use your hips to manage your energy levels. And there's all sorts of stuff you can learn from it. But mostly what you want to do is get something in your hands and swing it around. And so that's true of this action. Sticking around, probably the, the more you learn, the better things you can be. So, sense of the place. It is, it is a place of things. And so, that's what we're doing. Uh, we can still play around with them. I'm not sure if anybody else can do anything around with them. I'm going to get your pipe point to the ground faster than you can get my pipe point to the ground. And just keep it. Alright. Just make sure to have, give each other enough space. Maybe one or two steps either side. Got it. Uh, 